Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you are looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today, we are doing uh, Feeling the Way, Chapter 30. Actually, sorry, 31. Yes, I am not entirely ready. I got off my bike in front of the dilap dip dilapidated church. It was getting warm as the sun reached its zenith. A minute later, a, a minute later, a GF all-terrain noisily approached and stopped. I smiled. No, the smile I gave at beating him here dropped as I saw his shell shock expression. The morning hadn't gone well for him. We were at the FBI office first thing. I was there to make sure he didn't change his mind. Of course, the agents who surrounded us kept me in their sights, in their sight instead of him. But Jared asked for the agent in charge, explaining why, and he was escorted away, while I was escorted to a different office where I was questioned too. It's almost like they thought I was there to desecrate them or something. I'm not the one with the habit of betting law enforcement agents who are trying to capture him. They don't have to go out to be after me for me to bet them. Also, a bet isn't required. An interrogation table works just as well. I wonder if anyone has, was watching the camera feed and if I can get a copy to send Tom. Jared, we can do this after you've rested. The monkey shook his head, but it was more an act to clear it than negation. I'm, I'm going to be fine. I need to deal. I need to. I need to deal with this. Emotions to the wreck. Actually, you know what? I need to deal with emotions to the wreck of a church, with the one who desecrated it. So, this is one of yours. I was cautious in how I asked, doing my best to distance the high emotion of the history I was told from the reality of what Jared represented. I knew Damien was a master at manipulating people when he was alive, but now that he was a god, didn't that make him like the other gods? It wasn't like many of them were forthcoming about their intentions. My god might be among the most obtuse in it with what he wanted, considering he only spokes in emotions and intent. Yes, he answered. I guess that makes sense. You guys were all about taking over churches, after all. There I went, being all insensitive. He shrugged. I've heard about that, but I don't know what it was about. That was the old one's work, not the blood. I'm never going to get used to you calling Damien that. You think having you refer to your god by him, capital H, sounds normal? Good point. So, Wannabe was here? I don't know. The sense of desecration is strong, but we ran into each other before I could do more than search before I could do any searching for more. I nodded and motioned for him to take the lead. Inside it was immediately early afternoon in inside it was early immediate early afternoon. Yeah, I inside of well in the church was well maintained. Even the traces of our scuffle were gone. The pews were lined up. The calendar, the, the candelabras had their candles. Is this real? I asked. I mean, are we seeing what the magic wants us to see, or is this actually the church preserved through the centuries? I'm not sure. He ran a hand over the pew. This feels real, but I don't see why someone would preserve this and not make sure the rest of the town survives. Maybe this isn't what they planned. Magic doesn't always work the way we think. He nodded. Maybe. The power is anchored in the basement, so that's where I'm going to be able to tell. Then he then whispered, I hope. I didn't react when he glanced my way. He was entitled to think that his fear wasn't noticeable. He was as much out of his death here as me. At least he knew what sent him here. I still had no idea why that kid had an image of that stained glass in his head. 
a possibly occur a possibility occurred to me and I took out my phone no signal I'd have to ask Elder Brislow if he had figured out which of the god powered the kids magic later my hackles rose again when I entered the back and looked into the empty sleeping chambers do you think they intended to be preserved with the church Jarek shook his head there's no way power on this level comes from a personal sacrifice lives paid for this to happen the town maybe if we know how to do something like if we know how to do something like this I wasn't told by we he means his faction the other followers of the blood the god of sacrifice and revenge as far as I know I said every repository of knowledge about the marks and your magic has been raid raided are you fishing for information I'm just letting you know that what letting you know what I've been told I hadn't started walking when that happened he was silent as he opened the door to the basement a door I knew stayed open when I chased him out stop he did then looked at me ear scanted ear canted what if we have this wrong what if it isn't preserved but resets that would explain why everything is everything's like it was before we fought back there that's possible like I said I won't be able to tell what the magic does until I've, I've studied the basement okay then we need to ask one question before we continue what happens to us if we're still in here when the reset happens Jack looked worried then relaxed the last one happened between the time we left and came back that means we have at least until nightfall since that's when I arrived that was if we were dealing with something happening every 24 hours I didn't tell him that he was already stressed enough a day cycle made sense that was what we worked on but thinking only that way was how you made the mistake that got people killed the problem was that I couldn't think of a cycle that would make sense to people back in the early 20th century at least not one that was shorter than a day I followed him down the stairs and I used my phone for light as did he I don't care what movie you watch even those true to magic ones that seem to be popular these days using your phone for light is a lot easier than the less and less costly than using magic balls light a fire first once you're out of that then you go to magic we were back in the smell of death old and new can you feel it Jared asked I can feel that magic was twisted into something it wasn't meant to be he nodded someone tried to appropriate the magic here can you tell how long ago wannabe wasn't supposed to be able to use magic but at this point I was better off assuming the little I knew about him was wrong not recent but not as old as a church closer to now though he moved to the center I'm going to do something don't freak out I raise an eyebrow I'm an or we don't do freaking out he took off his shirt and smiled and I smiled yes I definitely see why you might think I might freak out I'd freak out take off your pants I might have to run away screaming he looked at me deadpan I'm choking yeah. you have more scars than I've seen on a body before living body I mean but that's not going to send me running he looked at my at his arm and chest you've seen a body with more scars than I have was it someone from the someone from the from the old god I shook my head my dads were terrified of my condition were terrified my condition me meant meant I wouldn't be able to handle the sight of mutilation so when I was 13 one of them took me to an autopsy it was the victim of a serial killer and he went to town on her on her hard she had scars that were two years old there was not one inch of her body untouched he stared at me was he caught I smiled oh he died all right you I snorted I was 13. we have an overconfidence tree but not that not that bad of one two of my dads worked together on it as far as law enforcement is concerned the killing just stopped one day of course for the next five years we were under constant surveillance we might hate each other but we don't squeal on our family especially when we agree with what he did with what they did well 
Uh, showing you my scar isn't what I was referring to. He pulled a knife, something slim with an artisanal feel to it. Then he carefully looked over his left wrist. I was close. I was too far to see well, but he moved a point over an existing scar from a grouping that formed the closest stripe to his hand. I had questions, but I knew better than to ask them now. The result of disrupting magic in progress was rarely pro pl pleasant. What he did was anticlimactic to, say, anticlimactic, to say the least. He let the blood run down his hand, moved it so it flowed along his index, then knelt and touched the, the drop forming to the ground. I waited. I waited some more. I waited again because it was always when you thought nothing was going to happen that it did. Okay, I don't have that much patience. I opened my mouth and light rippled away from where he touched, causing marks on the floor to glow. Immediately, I could see some weren't glowing as brightly, as if something was obscuring them, but I followed the light. It went. It went up the walls to the ceiling, leaving behind more glowing marks. I gawked as I took in the, glo the now glowing basement. One thing is true across all magic. The more of a magical the, ma the more of the magical language is needed to power something, you guessed it, the more powerful it is. He smiled at me. Feel free to freak out. I closed my mouth. What powers all of this? I didn't bother hiding my awe. I don't know. But I'm not worried about that. That was set in place a very long time ago. What I'm worried about is that. He indicated the partially obscured marks. Looking at them, I saw how they formed a pattern of their own. Lines on the floor heading to the wall where they congregated into... Is that a door? I asked, and canted my head. The ship was definitely door-like. I think so, Jared answer, looking at the floor. And the way it's arranged, I think it was set up to feed off the existing magic and... Oh, fuck. What? I asked, looking at him over my shoulder. I just boosted the output of all this so we could see it. Okay. Then it hits me. Oh, fuck. Shut it down. I back away from the door, noticing now how it's now shimmering. That isn't how this works. I set the power in. It's going to stay until it gets used up. Really? You just want power into something you know nothing about? Feel free to freak out now. The humor brought me back to myself. I'm a Nor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough guy. Fucks on any guy in range. Never let anything stop you. I might be forbidden from arming you, but that doesn't mean that doesn't stop me from researching you. I wouldn't be in the same state as anyone from your family if I know where if if I know they are there. I smiled. There are days when having a reputation like ours is good. What are we looking at here? I asked. No idea. This is someone else's magic latching onto the marks. Someone needed power and figured they they'd use this place as a battery to open a doorway to something screeched out of the doorway and flew at us. We jumped in different direction. I pulled my gun as I rolled to a knee. I'm, I made out yellow fur with spots, maybe rosettes, a jaguar or cheetah. I smiled at the idea of shooting a cheetah, then couldn't help see Eddie and it vanished. I fired at it. Three shots. My ear rang. It's not real. Gerald yelled. Some phantom the magic caused to his scream as the phantom ran a hand, an arm through him. It sounded like electronic distortion. I didn't fire as it kept flying around, muzzles open in a nearly super, supersonic scream. If three bullets had done anything, seventeen more wouldn't either. I took aim. Fuck, Dad! Not this time! I holstered the gun. Jared was scared, but lucid enough to stay away from the phantom. What do we do? He asked. Not let it touch us is a, as, is a good place to start. I looked at the portal. When the magic runs out, is it going back in there? He stared at me. How the fuck would I know? Don't touch that. I pointed to the doorway. Do I look insane to you? I've learned the hard way that even sane people do really stupid stuff. I took out my pen, but drew a blank as to what to do with it. I didn't know any phrase that could have a ghost, since those weren't a thing. Do you have anything I, that can affect it? I asked. No? He paused. Maybe? He looked around, then ran to the knife. The phantom headed for it. I was an idiot. I had to be. I ran, I ran, 
and put myself between it and him. It was painful as he moved through me. I gritted my teeth because I would not scream. I would not give in to the pain. I was an or Pain was part of our DNA. It was what I drank instead of the milk, instead of milk as I grew up. That and I felt pain that nearly tore me apart not even two days ago. I, this was nothing compared to that. It, it was through me. Okay, I need to make a decision here. Is do I make this a mistake? Do I do I consider this a mistake, or is Wyatt picking up something in the process that he's a little too busy? Okay, it was. Th I'm I'm leaving it as I. I think it it makes. Sense. I it was through me, and I could breathe. What did you do to it? Jared asked, and I staggered as I turned. It was like pieces of it had been ripped had been ripped out. No idea. Now hurry up because it's getting over what ha whatever happened. The missing part were refilling it. No, he, whatever it was, that was a guy. Nicely hung too. He looked from me to Jared, seeming torn between attacking me because I caused something to him and stopping Jared. I need to find a spot. Jared was searching his arm, running a finger over the scarification. You have a lot of untouched fur. Who fucking cares if it breaks the look? Survival is more important. This isn't about how it looks, he replied. I have to st stay within the stripes. Why the fuck would you do that? Because my god orders it. Limitations force growth. Abundance breeds corruption. The phantom made a run at Jared, and, being the idiot that I clearly was, I moved to intercept it. It breaked off. We were both as surprised at the action as we stared at one another. He searched my face, then screamed. My head exploded with images, Then, and when it stopped, I was on the floor, hand over my ears, and the only sound was my scream. I shut my mouth. Stop! I managed to say before Jared forced the phantom back into the doorway. I couldn't make sense of everything I saw yet. I know what it did. What I did to it. Good. Would it? Would it? Blah. Will it help us kill it? No. I forced myself to stand. The last time I felt this weak, there had been a magically enhanced drug involved, two days of dancing, and a bet as to who could abstain from sex the longest. I won barely, but mainly because I lost consciousness somewhere in there. Jared, a hand extended toward the phantom, and blood flowed from his blowed from his hand to create a cage around the phantom. Look, I can't do this for this long. It's my blood that's flowing, and I'm going to lose consciousness at some point. It's okay. It's not okay. I'd like to live through this. Steve, St Stefan, I called to the phantom, and his head snapped in my direction. Images of a young man, a young cheetah, walking through the remnant of the town, awe on his face, and an old map in his hand flashed. And I forced this away. Those pieces that were ripped out, they stayed in me. Because it flew through my me bodily, maybe because it I resisted the pain. I didn't know I don't know why. I didn't know why. But part of Stephen Stephen Mullen stayed inside me, the real one. The one the, not the thing running around killing boys. It's okay, Stephen. Stephen. Stephen? I, I I'm gonna go with Stephen. It's okay, Stephen. You're out of there. The amazement the young man felt on entering the church couldn't be measured. Stories he'd heard, legends, really, of an old map found in a sh and an old map found in a shoebox in the attic. The things that very that every adventure book needed, and it was his adventure, and it led him to this church. All it had cost him was his soul, not that he knew it then, a, the daughter and wife. He promised he'd return too soon. I forced myself back to the now. When Jared called Stephen a phantom, he was closer to the truth than he thought. Ghosts weren't a thing. The dead don't remain, unless magic was involved. He didn't know what the design on the back of the map meant, but he knew when he lit the basement with the lantern that this was where he could do it. There had always been stories in his family. Stories of magic and power. How his great 
grandmother had been able to make things move with the wand she'd made. They said that when he was born, she laid the wand next to him, whispered something, and died the next day. He didn't know. He didn't know that until much later. His father had thrown the wand away. A mark of Satan, he'd said. His father had always clung to the church. So it was appropriate that in this, base, in, in this church basement, he felt power. When he drew the lines, the way the back of the map showed, he brought. He thought he'd make something wonderful. I ground my teeth. Quiet, Jared called, and he sounded far, too far. This isn't your fault, I told. Stephen, you didn't know what would happen. You aren't responsible for what escaped when you went into the doorway. Magic could create ghosts could create ghosts, bind a soul to a place, and a lot of time, once bound, no outside force could free that soul. It's okay, I told Stephen. I will stop him. I will avenge you. You can let go now. Once bound, a soul needed to free itself. And that concludes chapter 31 of Feeling the Way. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next one's going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story, this is available exclusively on my Patreon. And if you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the note. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.